Hey guys, I'm Angela and welcome back to Hobby Night. This week, I'm going to give you a tour of my hobby space. Now, I was not blessed with a preview copy of Curse City from GW, but that's okay. I'll be getting my copy next week and don't you worry, there's going to be plenty of content for it. I'm very hyped for it. You guys probably already know that. But in the meantime, I decided with that coming in, I needed to clean up my hobby space because I had a bunch of projects out and things were just really a mess. And when doing that, I decided, wouldn't it be cool to show off my actual hobby space to the fans? Because that seems to be a little bit of a trend right now on YouTube as well. Why not jump on that bandwagon? And I'm going to start with my board game wall because let's face it, you guys have probably seen this a lot and I have a lot of games and I've been able to actually start playing them a lot more because of the pandemic, because it's given me a lot of time to. So I wanted to kind of go through my collection and talk about it a little bit. And I'm gonna start with Aftermath because this is actually one that I've played a bit recently. And while I love the storybook element of its narrative design, the card mechanics just for combat were terrible. I really didn't like it. But I also have other things like these Euro games, Lowlands and Feast for Odin, both really good. This one is maybe a little big for my britches because it's a very dense game and I don't know when I'll get around to it, but I do hope to because it's really cool looking. Um, Brass is actually another one like that, kind of like Feast for Odin where I got it more kind of as a collector because I really like it as an art piece. These two games are gorgeous and they go out of print really regularly and stay out of print for a really long time. So I just, I wanted to grab them while I could even if I don't get around to playing them like super quickly. The Epic Encounters are these new things from Steamforge games that I really like, and they're great for getting miniatures for your D&D games. I'm gonna pull one out here real quick just to kind of give you an idea. This one in particular has this giant, like frost giant in it, which has a really cool sculpt and I really, really enjoy them. That is the actual size of the miniature there on the box. And it also has these great little campaigns in there for GMs. So they're really actually kind of cool. Um, much like how I get these for the miniatures primarily, it's actually why I picked up Dungeon Saga too. This one is also a narrow driven cooperative game and it has some really cool minis. I got a lot of doors actually out of this that I use in my D&D campaigns. It's really cool. Now, Junk Art is one that surprised me because I played it a couple of times with friends great party game, especially if you're like wanting to get drunk or something and just have a good time. It's a great dexterity game, very casual, just a lot of laughing really. Now let's get into some, a little bit of Euro trash style things. Ameritrash. Or Ameritrash, sorry, not, yeah, not, not a Euro trash, Ameritrash. Um, with stuff like Starcadia Quest. I'm a big fan of the Cool Mini or Not games. Um, you'll probably see a bunch of them on the shelf. Um, and this one in particular just fits my anime heart really well. Uh, Tower or Age of Towers is one I like because I like tower defense game. Art's not super great in it, but the mechanics I thought were fun. I'm also a huge fan of deck builders, although Clank I have not played yet, and I know there's a ton of expansions for it, so I really need to get around to this one because I've heard great things. Now, occasionally, I actually really like to dip into these um, single player narrative games. Now, they do have options for playing with multiple people because they're cooperative, but they also work really well as a solo game. And these two in particular, Mythos Tales and Legacy of Dragon Holt, basically fun function like choose your own adventures. And I loved those books as a kid. So these really fit that aesthetic for me and I love it. Um, Charterstone is a legacy style game that I played recently during the pandemic. And I gave it like four shots. Pull it, it down. It just, uh, it's, I got it because I really thought the design of the box was cool when it first came out, sat on it forever, finally have played it. It just really didn't do anything for me. I, I wanted to like it because I like the mechanics in legacy games. This one just never actually felt like it evolved. I don't know, it was very weird. Now, Mysterium is one that I absolutely adore. Also a great party game, cooperative. Um, there's tons of great videos on it. Shut up and sit down. I think has a really good one. Go check it out. Castle Ravenloft is of course, mostly for D&D miniatures because a lot of the games here are. And let's go ahead and move down. Castle Panic, also a tower defense, a really good one. I would actually consider this like almost a classic nowadays. I don't think it technically is, but like I kind of consider it because it's one of those go-tos that I always recommend. Well, it started your collection like 10 years ago. It really did. It actually started my collection like 10 years ago. So I have, it's got this like really soft spot in my heart for it. I will always recommend Castle Panic to people. Also, if you've got like kids um, or you've got like families and everything, this is a really great game to play with them. 
Um, I've got a couple of starter sets and stuff. I've got some like card games, Monopoly is just there as a uh, shelf support. We've got legitimately, a, it's still in the plastic. It is le legit in the plastic. It is it's actually it's holding exactly this shelf the height. up. Yeah, it's exactly the height of the shelf. Well, and it it's helps exactly support. the height of the shelf when the shelf is sagging from all the heavier games. You can actually kind of see it here. It's a the top shelf is yeah, way actually on this one. I didn't actually notice the sag quite as much as it. it it's yeah, it, it, it's, it's it's a weight bearing monopoly. <laughs> it is. It's a weight bearing monopoly because it's protecting my leader games like Root and Vast Mysterious Mansions, which I talked a little bit about in my top five board games video, but I love the artwork for this. And I've been playing Root digitally because I haven't actually broken out my physical copy yet. And I'm a, I'm absolutely loving it. I've gotten through most of the tutorials. I still have a couple of them like woodland creatures to still discover and everything and play as, but I love it. If you can get your hands on it, I do think it's in between a print runner right now, but it's coming, I think, soonish. Um, then I've got a bunch of, this is a card game, which I've not played, but I heard really good things about. And it has a co-op, a competitive, and a solo mode. So, which always interests me when games do that, because I'm always like, how do your mechanics and like stuff change? Then I've got some Betrayal games. Also, I've got Dune, um, which I kind of just got as an art piece. We've got the Betrayals, which I've talked a lot about because they're classics. I love them. If you don't own this game, go pick one of the versions of it up. Most of them are good. King of Tokyo also kind of started the collection. That one's mine. This one's yours, but this started your collection, I think. Right? Um, it didn't start, but it was an early, early one. Early one. Then I've got a bunch of Fantasy Flight card games that I've collected over the years. This one I grabbed because I just really liked the art on it. What's and, the cover look like? Um, it's, uh, here is a Teneroff. It actually ties- Teranoff. Teranoff. It actually ties to Legacy. They're set in the same world. Mm. And there's an RPG book that has like core rules and everything that's also set in they this world. They have a war game where they did. They do. They Fantasy Flight still makes it. Okay. Um, and it's really interesting. I've not explored it that much, but that's one of the reasons I got it because I liked the idea of the branching worlds into different games. Um, then I've got a bunch of the living card games from Fantasy Flight, as well as a couple of horror games in here. I really, really like horror games. Um, that's why you'll see a bunch of mansions and a bunch of Arkham themed things. Undaunted is one that I'm really actually excited for because this is a like war themed deck builder. And I really want, like this is on my short list of things to play coming up soon. Cause I really like the idea I of it. I think that's our next big project. I think it is too. Once we're done with, I think Jaws of the Lion, I think this is what we're moving on to. So make sure to follow me on Instagram and Twitter to be able to see more about that. Chronicles of Crime is great. If you want like a cool AR experience and you just want to solve a mystery. And you AR? Can, um, not AR, sorry. Um, It has a thing where you can look on your phone and like do a, uh, see the scene. In it. Oh, it's an app assisted thing. Yeah, an app assisted thing. And um, sorry, I didn't mean to say AR. But yeah, it was really cool. Definitely would recommend it. Unmatched, I would go watch No um, No Rules Bard. Adam Blompier has great reviews of this. He really, really likes it. It's actually one of the reasons I picked it up. Then I've got a bunch of other fantasy fight games because I am a sucker for their design. Um, I've got Imperial Assault. Descent, Forbidden Stars, all sort of big box games that are really fun to play. I will say with Imperial Assault, I'm a little sad that Legion is not the same scale as it because they use a lot of the same characters and I'd love for those miniatures to be interchangeable. But you know, that's that's how they did it. Then we get over here to some more of the storybook games actually. Mice and Mystics, Stuff Fables, um, Commonauts all have that same plaid hat storybook style like Aftermath. I like how they're separated by Starship Samurai. Well, yes, of course. I mean, I need I need my spaceship Gundam-esque, like, I mean, because look at this, it's, it's they're, they're Gundams. We have never played this We've game. never played this, but I got it because one day, one day I want to paint these miniatures because they just look, I mean, it's giant. Oh, actually, that's a, that's a good call. I haven't even thought of that. Right? Like they're really cool. Honestly, so yes. So I, I might do that sometime on the channel because I think it'd be really fun. Let me know if you'd like to see that. Oh yeah, because with Cursed City, you don't have enough coming up. Clearly not, mm. clearly not. Um, then I've got a bunch of kind of a mix of things. Um, more, uh, this is actually sort of deck builder-esque um, and I've heard amazing things. It went out of print a while back, which is oh. why I grabbed it. Um, but it's back now, so don't worry. You can absolutely- It's not so much a deck builder as it is a bag builder. It's a bag builder, yeah. It's, it takes that deck building concept, but then 
it adapts cr- it really well. Each player has their own bag that they fill with ingredients. And you draw from it. And you draw from it to help create your potions. Yeah, it's really, really cool. Potion seller. Potion seller. But yeah, so this is also one that I want to play, but I think this requires a couple more people, so this is going to have to wait till after pandemic's fully over. Um, Another great, fun um, dexterity game, and then a couple more story-driven games. Time Stories especially. I was gonna say, can we talk about Time Stories? Absolutely. Yeah, you have this, but then if you take a small step back, please. I also have- You have like all of it. Yes, I have all of the expansions. This is, I think, everything that is out. And I actually really like the game. I mean, I talked about it in my top five, I believe. So I'm not gonna go into super long detail about it, but I recommend it, especially for just like, a one-off thing that you want to do every now and then. It's just a great thing to jump into. I also would highly recommend Bargain Quest. Um, I'm a huge fan of Renegade Games um, as a company. I love a lot of what they put out and Bargain Quest was one of the first things I got from them and really like, it wasn't theirs originally, it was a Kickstarter and I got the Kickstarter version. That's what this box is because it doesn't look like this anymore, but look how fancy it is. Um, But I really like Renegade picked it up and they've done a really good job with it. And there's been a lot of expansions and stuff since. So it's really, really fun. Um, Basically, you are a shop seller and you're selling equipment to- Could you be a potion seller? You could in fact be a potion seller. Excellent. And there's a, like I said, there's a lot of cool expansions and the art's freaking gorgeous. I love it. Um, Then we actually have some, classics like Patchwork, which is on my short list of things to play as well, because I've heard it's a fantastic two-player game, and I believe it's Uwe Rosenberg, so he's kind of super famous. Um, The Resistance, of course, because we need some good classic social deduction party games. Um, And then Cartographers is a cute little one that I've played. It's a roll and write that I find interesting, but not like super engaging. It supports up to like an infinite number of players. Which is the cool thing about it. Like that's actually my favorite part. you could print out an infinite number of like, playing sheets and then you could have an entire convention hall play one single game of it. Which that is the really cool part about this because like you've got these little sheets and I think there's printable versions so you can like keep playing and everything. So you can play with as many people as you want. Yeah, it Um, comes with a pad with like a couple hundred, but you could easily just print out more. Totally, totally. And you can scale them up to like, if you want them to be a little bit larger for just ease or whatever, but it's really, really cool. Then we're going to get down to this shelf, which is Oh, I'm sorry. I forgot about this. Oh one. my God. I, I forgot. By, by the, by the four side. chaos gods. By the four chaos gods. We've got a bunch of small games, which these are kind of my like go-to travel games. I especially have been um, really liking Tiny Epic uh, Dinosaurs and I want to try Tactics. Um, Stellar is a really cool, I believe I'm also rolling right. I'll have to double check on that. Um, Mysterium I Park. I don't think so. Oh, it may not be. It may, oh, it's a worker placement. It's a worker placement. Um, Mysterium Park is basically a condensed version of Mysterium. They've changed some things. I haven't actually played it yet, but I've heard that if you love Mysterium, you're going to really like this version and it's smaller so you can travel with it, which is great. Um, Same thing with like Railroad Inc. Um, Spirit Forest is, I wouldn't travel with this one necessarily. This is more of an art piece that I got. It was a Kickstarter and it just had gorgeous here. Let me show you real quick. Like, just look at that box art. Look at it, it's so pretty. That is nice. Yeah. So this is just a really nice, cute tile laying game. Um, but I really just was totally sold on the art, um, which is why I got it. Uh, this one I actually really like because it's a local designer from where we are living in California. And it is a fun um, social deduction game. If you like uh, cash and guns or the resistance or those style of games, it's going to be very similar, but you use a lot of like hand motion in it, which I that which is what sold me on it. Like it's got a very interactive game and I really enjoy that. Um, and then I've got a couple of cooperative games here with the Unlock series. So more mystery solving stuff. Um, same thing with House of Danger. This is also um, a little bit more of a uh, um, choose your own adventure style thing as well. War Chest is a really great, if you don't want to play chess, but you want that idea of the pieces have specific movements and those kinds of things and you're, um, but you want the bag draw mechanic, kind of like what you got in Klax and Quedlinburg. I really recommend this. I actually really like War Chess and it's an interesting one because you can play either two player or four player and only two or four player because it's either a team game or 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 just a versus game. Um, I think it's really cool. Plus the tokens in it have a really nice weight to it. I was just really impressed with it. Machi Koro is one of my favorite, just like you're introducing young families to games, go with this. And then the bottom two shelves are a lot 
of either big box games, um, specifically like Folklore, The Affliction, um, Holding On is a really dense, um, uh, really heavy narrative game. This is a really dense, dark um, narrative game that I really have been told great things about. Got it for a lot of miniatures because this also comes with like a miniature expansion that you can get. So it's really cool. And it's got this like gothic vampire undead, it's really just like up my alley, right? Um, type of mechanic or style and everything. So I was really sold on it. Um, got a couple of train games or this one's not really a train game, but it's got a similar mechanic to train games. Mansions of Madness, of course, which is... I like how you skip over Whistle Stop when I'm in the credits for it. You are... Wait, where is Whistle Stop? Or Whistle Mountain. Oh, Whistle Mountain. Yeah, that's right. I forgot you're in the credits for that one. I was a playtester. He was. He was like, he's in the credits for this one and I think Sorcerer City. Yes, actually. Yes. So we playtested, or you playtested those ones. I, I playtested this one, I think. I don't think not, so. Was I not? Okay. No, you played just, it at Gen Con. That's what it was. I played it at Gen Con when we went. Before it was out, though, I think, officially. Um, but yeah, okay, back to Mansions. Prob my number one game. I mean, you guys watch the top five. It's the best game to me. It's horror. It's got miniatures. I love it. In the same theme, Zombicide. <laughs> I'm moving, I'm moving. Sorry about that. Um, the Zombicide games. I own... A lot of them, but not all of them. I did skip a couple because I was like, all right, the zombie theme was getting a little repetitive to me, but I really like Black Plague. And I actually really enjoy um, Zombicide Invader. I think some of the things that they changed in the game is really cool. So if you're wanting to like jump into either of the Zombicides, those would be my two recommendations. Now we've got Cthulhu Death May Die. And I'm a little sad actually, I forgot to bring home the giant miniature that goes with this sucker. Cause I do have the entire Kickstarter version of Cthulhu Death May Die that was generously gifted to me by a friend of mine. And I could not believe it, especially when he brought in the giant freaking Cthulhu statue. Um, it's really cool if you haven't seen it, check it out, um, like Google or something. I'll eventually one day have it on the channel for sure. Then I've got Grim Forest, which I actually really like. Um, it's a it's a fable game basically um, with a cool card mechanic, and I just I really find it it's fun. It's very competitive and the, in the style that I really enjoy. And then I've got Tainted Grail, which is the most recent Kickstarter that we've had come in outside of the Dispel Dice. And I have no idea when we're gonna get to this, but I was really surprised because originally we put in on it because we're just like it looks gorgeous. It has some really cool miniatures. And the artwork was just stunning, right? And then it got really freaking good reviews. So I'm actually excited to play this eventually. I just hope that it's not one of those games like Kingdom Death where I kind of just sit on it forever because it's just so dense to take out. Now, got a little bit left to show off. And that is going to be a couple more Simon games. I've got Massive Darkness, of course, kickstarted as well. Gloomhaven, which I did not this is not the like Kickstarter edition. I bought this like just out of retail, I think at my store. Um, I've been playing Jaws of the Lion and I'm super excited to get into this. I don't know if we're gonna take those characters from Jaws of the Lion into this, but it's going to be very cool. And then I've got a couple like this one. This one I just got, cause it, look at this art. Like it's just so bright and bold and colorful. And then I think this is an economic game, which I've been really wanting to try out. And this back just was like, what is going on? I want to explore this. And sometimes that's just why I buy board games and end up having quite as large of a collection as I sort of end up having is just cause I, I see them and I'm like, that's cool. I know board games go out of print sometimes. Let me grab them while I can and just have a really cool art piece to show off. But Angela, what about, what about all the other board game shelves in the lair? <sighs> Do you want this video to end today? Hey guys, if you are enjoying this video, make sure to hit that like button and let me know about it down in the comments. If you haven't already and you're wanting more content, make sure to subscribe to the channel and hit that bell icon for notifications. And then if you want even more hobby goodness, make sure to follow me on Instagram or Twitter at hobby underscore night. Now, let's go ahead and get back to the video. All right, next, I wanted to go ahead and show off my cabinet full of painted miniatures that I actually have out because as I've been painting them over this quarantine and my goodness, have I painted a lot, 
I've been displaying them just to kind of remind myself of how cool they look. And I kind of have segmented it to like sort of sci-fi. Like I've got a combination of my tank, but the topper for the Lehman Rust that my husband did so we can have our commander out and easily accessible. I actually use this as storage for some of my terrain pieces and everything, just to like put them in here and have them readily available whenever we want to play. Cause with having the space and everything and the time, we actually have been playing a little bit more, which has been really, really exciting. And it's been why I've been using all of these minis. I have, so like up here is basically painted stuff that is not part of a faction specifically that I'm running. This down here is what I currently have painted for the Necrons. And honestly, like, so the Necrons were one of the factions that I got done first, where I actually had like a full, I think it's like 1,000 to 1,500 points or so. With the Satan, yes. With the Satan, yeah. And like when they came out, I went hardcore into painting Necrons and I got a whole bunch done. And so this space filled first and it just, it made my heart so happy because it was the first time I'd actually had like an army of that size, fully painted, based and rimmed. And it was just, it was so awesome. Like I, I can't even actually properly put it into words because it just, it, it basically what it did is it encouraged me to want to keep doing this because the satisfaction of seeing them like this was just that cool. Like it was just such a good moment. Now below, I'm gonna squat down a little bit. Now below is what I have of stuff that has kind of been loose I've built and but haven't actually done anything with. So this is sort of my gray and multicolored pile of shame. You can see that I've got some um, Space Hulk um, blood angels in here, I believe. And uh, which is actually really cool. I actually mm -hmm. found a sprue of these recently. So I even have some more to add to them. None of the special weapons, but um, a couple of the uh, just standard guys. But there's a bunch of loose stuff in here, a bunch of Underworld kits, some Blood Bowl guys, uh, Blitz Bowl characters, actually. A bunch of D&D &D characters, as well as my white lion for uh, Kingdom Death, which is like the one set for Kingdom Death that I've actually built. It's the white lion and then the core like characters and everything, which are always really cool, but very delicate and always make me nervous. And then on the bottom is just more unbuilt stuff or not unbuilt, but built stuff, but things that need either finishing painting and everything. So that's the one side. All right, and then on the other side, I have on top again, of course, painted stuff. Now this is kind of my fantasy side and I've got actually a bunch of stuff that I did very early when Contrast was first coming out. This ghost lady was one of the paints or one of the things that I prepped, basically prepping myself for Contrast paint coming out. I got the um, glazes that they make that are kind hex of- Hex-ray flame. Yes, hex-ray flame, thank you. No, that's the green one. Um, night gloom something or another. It's the blue one. The proto-contrast. Basically, yeah, proto-contrast. And we basically painted our, um, I don't remember if it was an Age of Sigmar set that these mm -hmm. came out of or a night, um, or a, the Dire Chasm. I believe they're from the starter sets for Age of Sigmar. I think you're right. Um, but we got these basically, and this was our test. And this was us first experimenting with contrast or contrast-like paints on miniatures. I fell in love with like with the effect that I got on, especially the um, ghost ladies, but also the green guys. And it, that's kind of just what sold me on contrast paint. And then when it came out and I used it, I was like, oh my God, this is even better than what those were. <laughs> it just, it was, it was from there, it was just all contrast paint all the time. And I've just kind of kept painting and using it. And it's been really, really fun. I do want to call out real quick this particular mini of my collection, because this is something that I did not paint myself. Um, sorry, it's got a little bit of dust on it. This is something that I got from a swap um, and everything at a local game store, not the one I work at, but a different one. And it was just so cool. It was an entire Imperial Guard army that was Ratman. And I just thought that it's was- It's a so rattling army. Yeah, it was a rattling army. Ha, 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 ha. Ah, that was so, it was just so cool to me. So I basically bought the entire army because somebody was selling it and I just, I, I, this is, this is one of like the completed pieces because there were some unfinished pieces. This was like one of my favorite completed pieces as like the tank. It just was so cool. Now, my death guard. <sighs> this is my army case. This is my active list right now. Um, maybe minus a couple of plague marines and everything, but I spent so much time in early quarantine painting up 
roughly 90 zombies. <laughs> that was 60. It was, oh, you're right. It was 60. I have another 30 still to paint is what it is. Um, those were recent purchases though. Um, but yeah, I spent very early quarantine. If you ever go back and watch the early vlogs, it's a lot of me painting zombies. Um, I'm glad that they are done now. And I'm glad that I have the list to this level and it looks so cool and cohesive and it just, mm, it makes me so happy. Uh, much kind of like in the same way that the Necrons did. Below are some of the Death Guard that I still have to paint. And all of these here are Plague Marines, <laughs> all of them. Um, I've also got a ton of Terminators still to paint. Um, these are just the ones that are built in pre-prime. Originally when I was starting the army, I was going to do a little bit more of a classic look. And so I primed like most of what I had in Death Guard Green. Um, this was before Contrast Paint had come out and I really never found a style of painting that worked for me in the classic style for my Death Guard. So I just, I primed them all and just kind of left them. And for like a year, that's how they were, were set. Until of course I got them all painted up, which has been really, really fun. I actually need to get back to that. I think it's, I, I'm, I'm feeling after Curse City, maybe, maybe not on camera or anything like that, but I'm feeling the itch to get back to painting some Death Guard. Would that be like, before or after the Starship Samurai robots? Who knows? There's a long list of things that I want to paint. Isn't that always the problem with hobbyists? We always just have so many things that we want to paint. Now, the very last shelf down there is basically my Black Legion army. <laughs> Um, it's base. it's been started. I want to, this is actually the inspiration for what I did with Abaddon. Um, originally we were testing some very simplistic painting styles, doing a Zenithal, um, highlight using black, gray, and white, and then basically just doing all of the detail work. Um, and I actually really like the look that these guys got. We're going to, I'm probably going to continue this on my Black Legion because I, I still think it works really well. I'll add a little bit of color in for some of the fabrics, but I really like the way that the armor is done on this. So I'm going to stick with this and probably do a whole Black Legion army at some point um, in this style. I think it'll look really, really cool. But that has been my hobby cases. Let's go ahead and move into the main space and look at the desk and where all the magic happens. And finally, my hobby desk. And really the room where all of the magic happens because this is where most of the recording happens that isn't like face cam stuff. And it's where all of the painting occurs. And I recently tidied the desk up. Um, this is a Norden? Norden. Norden. This is a Norden desk from Ikea. The thing that I like about it and the thing that's the most useful to me is that these sides both fold down um, and actually it basically just becomes this like uh, width, which is really, really cool. So if I, cause basically used, I used to have this table out in our living room and we would collapse it down and that's where we'd paint and then we moved it in here. And this setup has worked brilliantly for us. Having it now against the wall does mean that I can't use the drawers on the other side, which as you can tell, I do have full of things. This one is excess boxes of things that I need to paint. Um, Oh, might have pulled it out very far. Um, so I can't use the de the drawers on the other side because it does have two sets of them, but I have enough other storage. It's really not that big of a deal. And because I have these hobby zone um, modules, I actually have plenty of storage on my desktop, which these, the topper things here and these little drawers are super, super useful to me. I really like their product. They build really easily and they store things super well. Um, I got basically my contrast paint because that's most of what I use all up here um, on the top. So this is actually, sorry, these are dries and shades on that side, along with couple of technicals. All of my contrast paints are right here because this is my section of the desk, like this section right here. So I sit directly in front of them. And then my bases and layers are on this side because I still actually use those quite a bit nowadays as well. And then of course I've got on the very top, all of my tools and brushes, which is really convenient. I also occasionally um, actually just use a little Mason jar and this will be sitting on the desk here. So when I'm actively painting, I often have that there. So when I'm going back cleaning my brushes and I need them to dry, but still be readily available and accessible, they just sit in there and that way none of the water drips onto my desk or anything, but they're still able to dry and be safe and kept away. And they're not just like slightly out of reach or anything like that. So. It's a really nice setup. Um, I very much enjoy it. I've got basically like all of my adhesives in these drawers. Um, I've got a bunch of tufting materials. Um, these are actually all from the Jazza's Jazzy Art Box. Well, most of them, this is a random thing, but a lot of those are from there. 
bunch of my tools, a bunch of those secret weapon miniature bases that I have that I used on uh, the Slambo miniature and a couple other like chaosy things. So basically like all of my bits and bobs that I need for painting and getting all of my projects done. Open the here. second drawer. This is where a lot of my other tools are. I've got a- I was a, gonna say, this is an interesting drawer. This is a really interesting drawer. So let's ignore Set it. Set on the table, set on the table. Yes, all right. So this one has a bunch of tools in it. These. Um, actually, a lot of green stuff, world stuff. Um, these are really cool because these are things that you can roll um, on resin. So I have, like, you can actually do it on green stuff, um, but you can also do it on, like, magic skull. Um, and basically... Or milliput. Or milliput, actually. Really, any sort of epoxy material. Um, you can roll out these patterns that these rollers have on them and do really cool basing Rotated. material. Oh, sorry. Uh, really cool basing material and everything. So this is a Necron. This one. is a Necron one. I have also an Eldar one. Yeah, hold it still. Yep. Says the Eldari. Yep. Turn it. Cool. And then I also have a sort of generic one for just cobblestones, which is kind of neat. And then also, uh, this is actually one of my favorites. It's a Sister of Battle one. It's it's um, a temple is how they label it, but it's got fleur de lis and everything. So when I do my sister's army, this is what I'm going to be using on my basing. And then I've got all of my like tufts and stuff in here from various companies, um, Army Painter, Green Stuff World, um, uh, Red uh, Gamer Grasses, which are do. If you ever see me using all of those really cool like alien colored tufts, um, let me grab one of the brighter ones. So you can see them here. Like, How do you get so much in that drawer? Um, mad skills at being able to like organize things. I'm gonna have to probably reorganize this. I know. I was like, everything. I didn't know. I didn't know it was gonna get this bad. I'm sorry. Uh, no, no, no. It's okay. I'm gonna just set my drawer off to the side, and I'll put it away later, and do a little bit more cleaning. So what's in the mysterious third one? The mysterious third one is actually just excess like mason jars, tape, oh, okay. etc. It's really boring, <laughs> actually. And then over here is my excess storage for either active projects, like my Nurglings that I have not finished painting, despite the fact that I did that video middle of last year or something like that. Um, I've got Celestine in pieces over here, which I'm not gonna pull her out because she's kind of tacked down because I didn't want her to break because she's really delicate. Um, I've got a bunch of my sister's stuff over here. But yeah, this is my hobby desk. It's, I really, really like it. Uh, basically, I got this space set up just before quarantine um, happened. Um, it was really funny. We took a vacation, we set this space up, and then like two weeks later, quarantine happened. And I was so grateful that I was able to get this how it was because it just meant that I was actually able to do all of the hobby things that I wanted to during that time and actually make some progress on all of my large plastic hoard that I have. And- Oh, the large plastic hoard. You mean like those over there yeah, that you yeah. haven't talked about? Yeah. Or are those boxes below even? Uh, yes, yes, those boxes. I mean, there's even stuff on that shelf over there on like the top and uh, the top two shelves that are unpainted miniatures. Listen, I have unpainted miniatures wait, wait. pretty much everywhere. Well, what about, what about in there, Angela? The the forbidden door? Yes. No, 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 no. We're not gonna look in here. Like, Why are we not going to go past the forbidden door? I thought the forbidden door had been opened. Tony Khan <gasps> said so. Oh shit, you're right. Tony Khan did say so. Okay. That's right, I'm going for it. I'm capturing from this angle because I think I need to, to, to capture what is happening above your head. Yeah, the, um, the giant pile of boxes up there and, and, Listen, uh, we talked about your pile of shame in a previous video, but my god, woman. I might have a little bit of a problem, you guys. I like to collect art pieces. There's even more boxes. There is, like, this is- there's, there's a Necromunda box. There is a Necromunda box. I think that's purely just terrain, though, so. Okay, well, tell you what, tell you what we're going to do. What are we gonna do? You are gonna get all of this painted. You have a Battlefleet Gothic box. I do, I do have some Battlefleet Gothic miniatures. Um, Yeah, that should be fun for the channel one day, too. Okay, okay, Th this is, this is this is absurd. I also, I also have I also have Bretonians. Okay, you miss miss. This is a, this is an embarrassment of of riches, and you are going to stay here and get these painted until they are all done. Okay, wait wait.
All right, well, that has been the tour of my hobby space, apartment, collection, etc. I want to know now about what you guys have in your places. Let me know about your hobby space down in the comments below. If you guys like this video, just make sure to hit that like button and I will see you guys next week for some more hobby content, specifically focusing on some wonderful vampires and a particular cursed city.